Hello, Richard from BudgetGuitarist.com. You know, this coronavirus thing, no haircut, I look like Keith Partridge. Hang on a second. All aboard, ye land lubbers. No. I mean, this, the, I wear this to mow the lawn. Go Bulls, let's just proceed. Today, I'm gonna give you 10 tips for modifying your Fender or Squire Stratocaster. Hopefully there'll be something in this episode for everybody. Hopefully there'll be at least one neat thing you learn. If not, well, sorry. Tip number one, removing one of the tone knobs and moving the volume knob down. I thought I was the only person who did this, but I found a bunch of other people and a couple of my friends who also do it. Check this out. Normally on a Fender Stratocaster, there's a tone knob right here, which is great if you want to hook your pinky around it and do volume swells like it's the 60s, right? That's cool. Uh, but I hate it. And that knob was always getting in the way of my playing. I would hit it with my hand and it was just really annoying. Not to mention the fact that I seldom use the tone control on a Strat. The Strat normally has one volume and two tones. I barely use one tone. The solution was to rewire the guitar and have one volume and one tone. Now, if you're going to do this, that's going to leave a hole on your pick guard. You can see how I have chosen to handle the situation. Tip number two, change the pickup configuration. The typical Stratocaster has three single coil pickups, neck, middle, bridge. One of the most common mods for a Strat is to replace the bridge pickup with a humbucker. This guitar started life as a Fender made in Mexico 48th Street Special. And uh, this is not the original neck, obviously, but we'll get to necks. These are Tex-Mex pickups. And this is a Tex-Mex humbucker. So obviously the advantage of this is that if you want a humbucker sound, you know, because you're playing harder rock or metal, then it's a really good idea to have a humbucker in the bridge position. And you can do that. Some people would say, well, yes, but you can get a humbucker that is the size of a single coil and put that in. Yeah, you can. I've done that before. That works great. The point being that you can decide on different pickup configurations. Let's get to tip number three. Pick card swap out. This can be purely cosmetic. I kind of like that mother of pearl toilet seat kind of look. You can't really see it unless I hold it in. Now you can see it, right? You can alter the appearance of your guitar by changing out the pick guard. Cosmetic, but it's still a mod. Here's an example of a two humbucker. As a matter of fact, there's even a humbucker in here. It looks like uh, I've written 20K on the back, which means that this pickup is ceramic and super hot. I believe I got it from an Ibanez that I had a long time ago. So there's that, there's that. Here's a black pickguard that's all singles. That's cool. Here's another, oh no, that's a Telecaster pickup. This would be neck position humbucker. If you have a Tele, that's one of the mods you could do, but that's another episode. Very important. If you're going to swap out your pick guard, this is an important point. You would think that every Strat ever made had the exact same pick guard shape and the holes were all in the exact same position, whether it was Fender or whether it was Squire or whatever. And if you thought that, you would be incorrect. So I have here a Squire 2 from the 80s. And although these pick guards look identical, what you would find is that if you actually tried to swap them out, the screw holes are in slightly different places, which means they don't line up correctly, which means you're either going to end up drilling extra holes or you're going to be frustrated. So it's really important to understand what you have, whether it's a Mexican made or an American made Strat. If you have a Squire, what model is it? Is it Affinity? Is it Classic Vibe? And do your homework before just buying a Strat pick guard because they mostly like on the Mexican, the American, mostly they'll all fit fine, but you really do have to be careful, especially in Squire land. Tip number four, the nut. If you have a Fender Stratocaster, whether it's made in Mexico or made in the United States, and it's fairly recent, you don't have to worry about it because they use synthetic nuts in both models. 
Well, no, some American strats use bone. The only time you want to think about replacing the nut is if it's made out of plastic. So if you've got an older Squire, actually, I don't know about the newer Squires. Maybe I can do some research in, in uh, post edit and put something up that says what they use. But in general, if you have a plastic nut, it is a solution that you can go and you can swap that nut out. And for your open strings, it'll sound a lot better. Five, locking tuners. These are Fender American Series locking tuners. So the concept is you put the string through, you tighten the screw on the back here, you tighten this, right? And then you turn this, one, two rotations, whatever the case may be, and your string is locked in and it helps with tuning. And it really does. It's also cool because even though there's two string trees on this neck, and this is an American neck, but we'll get to that in a minute, these are actually, the tuners up here are compensated. They're actually lower, right? These are actually taller. And that's because you want to be careful of the angle of the string coming across the nut onto the tuner. If this just went flat through, then when I played, these strings would pop right out of the, uh, of the slots in the nut. And certainly it makes string changing a lot faster and easier. And who doesn't like fast and easy? Number six, whole neck upgrade. So here's the history. This was originally a, as I mentioned earlier, 48th Street Sam Ash Special Made in Mexico Strat. And over time, I decided that I was going to do this mod where I was going to buy a higher quality neck, an American neck, American Strat neck, and put it on this guitar. And I did that. And then eventually I thought, well, you know what? Now I had two Strat necks. If I bought another body, I could actually make two separate Strats. That's what this is. So this neck was from an American Stratocaster. I bought it from a website called Stratosphere. And what Stratosphere does is they take Fender Strats, Mexican, American, whatever, and they, part them, they take them apart and they sell all the parts. Now they sell the parts in total for more than what they paid for the guitar and that's how they make a profit. But what's kind of cool about it is you can get an American neck combined with a Mexican body. You save a little money building your own Strat sometimes, but what I think is more important is you can build exactly what you want and you can do it over time. So it's like you get to have the guitar and you make incremental improvements. What is the difference between an American neck and a Mexican neck? These days in 2020, I think the, the quality of the American necks, I would still say is higher in my opinion, but I wouldn't say it's night and day. But a decade ago, there was a much bigger difference. Anyway, it is an actual mod that you can do. You can just swap out the neck. As a matter of fact, Leo Fender's original idea was that people would not get fret work done. When the frets wore down, they'd spin the guitar around to get out their Phillips head screwdriver, unscrew the neck, throw it away and buy a new one. Well, that's not what ended up happening, but you can do it. So if you own a Strat and you've never been to the website Stratosphere, you really need to go and just have a look around at all the cool different necks and bodies and hardware and pickups, etc. It's a really cool place. But if you're picking out a neck, we get to fret choice, right? So there's all different kinds of fret wire, the fret wire itself. On the original 50 Stratocasters, the fret wire was not very wide and it was not very tall. Now, that will lead to some really low action, but it can also cause some issues depending on your playing style. Now they call those vintage frets. I'm not a big fan of those. I like medium jumbo or jumbo frets. This guitar had jumbo frets. So you have vintage frets, which are not wide, not tall. You have medium jumbo and jumbo frets, which are both wide and the jumbo frets are a little bit taller. And there's another kind of fret right now on a lot of modern Stratocasters, they have something called thin and tall. And actually this, this Gibson Les Paul has thin tall frets. So the frets themselves are not very wide, but they're tall and I think there's definitely an advantage to that. When you have a wide fret, pretend this is the fret, okay? So the string goes over it. There's a big landing zone there where the string's going to be. So in terms of how in tune that note's going to be, in my experience, the smaller that landing strip, the better your intonation is going to be. But of course, the more fret work you're going to need because 
if it's a really, really fine point or small landing strip, I should say, then it's going to wear down quicker than if it's a little bit wider. These are semi-advanced concepts. If you're not really into fretwork and guitars and this kind of stuff, maybe you don't need to know all that, but it's good to understand what kind of frets you like. Once this current pandemic thingy is, is over and you can go back out to Guitar Center Sam Ash, it's not a bad idea to play a bunch of guitars and just ask some questions. You know, ask the salesperson, uh, what kind of frets are these? And, you know, ask to play a few different examples. So that's frets and replacing out the neck. How the neck feels, the fretboard, the fret wire, the back of the neck, that's a, that has a lot to do with how you feel about playing the guitar, right? So your left hand's going to be spending a lot of time on that neck, on the back, on the frets. And so it's really important that it feels really good in your hand. Seven, this one's cool and I can't demonstrate it. You can change the scale length. The scale length on a Fender Strat is 25 and a half inches. That's how long the neck is. The scale length on a Les Paul is 24 and three quarters inches. And so what that means is the different, the distance from the nut down to the bridge saddles is shorter on here. That means the frets are closer together. That means it's basically easier to play. You might say longer scale sounds better, shorter scale, easier to play. That's a little bit of an exaggeration, but not by much. But here's the interesting thing. Warmoth, they make uh, all kinds of guitar bodies and guitar necks. And they've really made a name for themselves manufacturing uh, Strat replacement bodies and replacement necks. And one of the things that they do is they offer a conversion neck. You can buy a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale in a Fender Strat neck. And if you put it on your Strat, your American or Mexican Strat, or probably most Squire Strats, it will be a shorter scale like a Les Paul. And it'll be easier to play. The guitar might not sound as full, but easier to play. Uh, it's kind of up to you. Eight, body upgrade. This is cosmetic, but it can also be practical. The body here, and I'm not going to take the guitar apart to show you, but basically has something called a swimming, swimming pool route. Usually on a strap body, they'll route this area, this area, and this area, and it'll be solid wood through here, solid wood through here. Uh, in some cases, like this guitar here, they will route a bigger area here and then smaller here, smaller here. This has a swimming pool route. This whole area is routed. And so if I wanted to, I could actually put three humbuckers in here. It can be cosmetic, like what color body do you like? Do you want to stain? Do you want to burst, et cetera, et cetera. But it can also be practical. So if you're thinking about changing, uh, you want to go with a different pickup configuration, you would want to have a body that, that matches the config that you want. Nine, trem block. This plate here has got six individual bridge saddles on it. If you take the saddles off, it looks like this. You can see it kind of from the side here, right? How it works is the strings go through on top of the saddle. They go down through this metal block and up inside here, the ball end of the string stops. And so the string comes through and it stops inside of here. You can see here, there's not a whole lot of metal, right? So this is, this is not, not very heavyweight. One of the difference between, historically, between less expensive and more expensive strats is the trem block, this chunk of metal right here. Here's what this one looks like. And this was originally on this Mexican guitar from, from a decade ago or so. Here's what I replaced it with. You can see how this is essentially double the thickness on the end, right? See the difference? Some people will tell you that this will give you increased sustain and better tone. What do I think? I think it was a $20 mod, and so I did it. Can I tell the difference? I honestly don't know. But I mean, for 20 bucks, you know, I don't mind putting that kind of money into a guitar part. Not at all. And finally, tip 10, the saddles. If you look at both of my two strats, this is my number, ugh, this is my number one. This is my number two. You'll notice that I've got these black saddles. These saddles are made by a company called GraphTech. If you think of a non-stick frying pan, right, where nothing sticks to it, hence the name. The problem with guitars, especially if you have a trem system where you're going to be moving the, the saddles around, you're moving the bridge around, right, 
is that the string can get caught on the metal and it can screw up your tuning. Also another problem is if you have metal saddles, over time that string can wear down and the metal that it's coming into contact with can wear down and it can eventually sharpen up and just start snapping your strings. I was having a problem breaking uh, strings on my Strat like quite a bit. So I did a little bit of research and I ended up buying Graftech saddles and quite frankly, you lose a little bit of high end if you use these. In my opinion, you just flat out do. The Strat is not quite as bright and zingy sounding, but I don't break strings anymore. So for reference, here is an example of a typical uh, Fender Strat saddle. I'll probably show a close-up picture of this, I think. The other nice thing about these saddles is that on a traditional saddle like this, sometimes as you adjust them, you'll end up with screws sticking out the top. So that's right where the side of your hand goes. So you can end up with like these little dents in your skin from these little screws that are sticking up. That's terrible. There's two ways to solve that. One, you can buy screws for these saddles that are specifically much smaller. Or two, you can go with something like a graph tech design or something that's, that's made similarly uh, where the screws don't stick up so high. To me, it's sort of like a, like a bonus. You've got your strings don't break and it's not uncomfortable to play. So there you go. That was 10 tips on improving your Stratocaster. And once again, the main thought I think I want to leave you with is there's a really good reason. There are a lot of good reasons that the Strat is one of the best selling guitars of all time, electric guitars. But I really feel like one of the reasons is that it is more customizable than any other well-known electric guitar that I can possibly think of. So if you're really into modding, if you're really into like trying out different things, I don't think that there is a better or more versatile guitar than the Strat. <laughs>